You couldn't have put Volcanic in the name. You had to make it a Blaze Accelerator card. And raw support? No, I guess you did meet us halfway. Um, look, Pain's happy, and that's all I really care about. That's it. No, no, yeah, no, deal's a deal. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you Kevin back. Deal's a deal. Oh, he's totally fine. He's been hanging out with Eugene. Hello? Man, that's gonna break his heart, though. He really likes Kevin. Alright guys, it's time to send Kevin back. Oh, can we have just one more day? I second that. I've been kicking Eugene's ass. Nuh-uh! -uh. No, a deal's a deal, plus kidnapping's technically illegal. We are really lucky that they cave so easily. Mmm, I guess you're right. Well guys, it's been fun. You do remember what to do when I send you back. Goat tournaments, evil swarm supports, pantheism back. Exactly! And I want them to stop looking for me. No one's looking for you. Matter of fact, people forget that you're here because you're hiding all the time. Sagan wants to kill me for what I did. Well, they won't find you here and I just got away with kidnapping, so I'd say you're good. And do you remember what I want? More anime girls, less card censorship, and more Blackwing cards, because there aren't enough of those already. And bird girls can't forget bird girls. I don't think I'll ever forget. All right, we done with goodbyes. I think we scarred him enough. Well, I guess that's goodbye, guys. Bye, Kevin. I'll miss you. We'll see each other again. So what do we do now? Brag, Eugene. We brag. Okay guys, time to brag! We did it, we got Pain Volcanic support. Or should I say that I did it because if it wasn't for my awesome videos, he probably wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, just saying, he also said so. <laughs> Pain commented and yelled for Volcanic support every day for over 450 days and it paid off. The guy's got over a thousand subscribers on YouTube without a single video and over a thousand followers on Twitter just posting about Volcanic support. And all he's doing is like shit posting and making and posting people's custom cards and stuff. That's all he's been doing. It's awesome. I think it's pretty safe to say that Pain96 will always be remembered as the volcanic support guy. And that's what this video is going to be about. There are many other Yu-Gi-Oh players, whether they be uh, Yu-Gi tubers, whether they be pro players, whatever, that are known for one deck, one archetype, one card, etc. They're just known for kind of one thing or maybe a couple of just key things. And that's what this video is going to be about, guys. I'm going to be talking about other Yu-Gi-Oh players besides Pain96 that are just known for one thing. For example, did you know that there was a volcanic guy before Pain96? Oh yeah! I'm probably gonna butcher this, but so Rob Pazakani, once again, I probably said that wrong, whatever though. The guy went 10 and 0 at YCS Charleston in the middle of Necros format. One YCS Charleston in the middle of Necros format with BA running around and everything, guys. The Shadals, Teller Knights, all that stuff running around. The dude went 10 and 0 with Volcanics, just with Blaze Accelerator Reload. That came out in Secrets of Eternity. That is it. That's it guys, and I tried to find some extra information about the guy. Um, I want to say he also played Volcanics for at Nats that year. I really want to say that I saw a deck list a long time ago from his Nats that year. I don't remember if he did well or what, but he, he I couldn't find anything for this video, but I'm pretty sure he played Volcanics at Nats that year as well. Let's put it this way, he got his invite to Nats at that YCS, so we know he was probably there. I literally only remember this guy because he had crazy hair and he's the only person I can think of that has done well with Volcanics. Maybe Pain will be the next one. I mean, he'd hope so. The guy whined about Volcanics enough, you'd think he'd be good with the deck. And since this is my video, let's get the obvious out of the way here. I made so many damn videos about Cyber Dragons over and over throughout the years, and I played that deck so much, and I got enough people playing that deck 
that the Mad Men of Konami actually made Cyber Dragon support and a lot of it like shit like I was like that's the thing guys I actually feel bad about leaving Yu-Gi-Oh because like I, you, you, people that watch the channel like I mean uh, they know that I left for a while and now I'm back but yeah, I left like right before they released the support, like before it came out in the States. Kind of sucked. I was just done with Yu-Gi-Oh! at the time, guys. I mean, it's, it's, it sucks thinking about it, but it, it's, what's done is done. I just, I still think it's cool that I got a company to make Cyber Dragon supports, um, and that enough of you guys through fan mail and everything supported. And I'm also known for having the most powerful binder in the history of all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Just look at this gorgeous, just... No one can touch me. No one can touch me. You guys through fan mail have given me a monopoly on Larvae Moth. That's your mistake. I will never be beat at Yu-Gi-Oh again. It's just not gonna happen. I have not been beat at Yu-Gi-Oh since I've had this. And if I lose, I just open it and vaporize whoever beat me. So did they beat me? They're not gonna be able to tell about it. That's all I'm saying. So I'm known for discovering that Larvae Moth is the most powerful card in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. But did you know that it wasn't me that actually discovered it? Not at all. So, different forums throughout the years have named Larvae Moth, you know, incorrectly as the worst card in Yu-Gi-Oh. We know that now. But, did you know that the Wikipedia page, the Yu-Gi-Oh wiki page for Larvae Moth, in the tips, if you went to the tips for Larvae Moth, it said that if you summoned Larvae Moth against your opponents, that they might quit out of sheer incredulity. Larvae Moth is the most powerful alternative win condition outside of Destiny Board and Exodia. Change my mind. And that's where the joke started. I mean, I've just kind of shit talked about Larvae Moth enough that they gave us Larvae Moth support, and I genuinely liked Cyber Dragon enough and played it long enough that they gave us Cyber Dragon support. I'm not gonna bitch, dude. Team Samurai X1, Sam. He's obviously your most famous Six Samurai player. I mean, the guy's, the guy's channel name is Team Samurai. S Samurai. Seriously, I can't think of another player that's known for Six Samurai, except maybe a player that you guys didn't know was known for Six Samurai. Jonathan Moore! You know who he is! House of Champs! Alright? Jonathan Moore has a first place win. What was that? SJC Houston? That's what I thought. Yeah, Shannon Jump Houston, guys. Shannon Jump Houston in 2008. And what deck did he get first with? Six Samurais. So is Team Sam really the best Six Sam player? I, 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 don't, I don't know. You, you guys tell me. I don't know if John plays... Samurai's anymore either. I will say though that John is mostly known for. I'm, I'm just gonna do it. What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. Like every freaking video, just what's good, YouTube? Every freaking time, man. That's the other thing that like. That's the other quirky thing. I guess it's not a car, but it's the other thing that John is known for in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. Is what's good, YouTube? As well as uh, doing the most, the best and most consistent market watches. I have to say. And did you know I'm not the only Yu-Gi-Oh YouTuber that has skits? Team APS does as well. But did you know that we? aren't the only two. No, and, and, and if you guys are like, oh, well, rank 10. Rank 10 is not there either. Do you guys know who the original one was? From, from what I remember, it was Wolfles. Like, Wolfles was uh, known for skits, and he was around when Galactic God was around, um, as well as, uh, he, was, he was around when Vine was popular. Let's put it that way. He made, like, a lot of pretty much just Yu-Gi-Oh! Vines. And I used to make Yu-Gi-Oh! Vines as well. I kind of wish I still had them, because some of them were pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, Vine was just a really popular thing for a while, and people would make, like, Vines, but they would just be on YouTube and stuff. That was a phase. I don't know why yu gi tubers hit that phase. That's a phase that I don't know if very many people will remember. But, yeah, we all had Vines. Like, I can't remember who else made, made vines. I know uh, Jason made vines and stuff, but like, I, can't, I just can't remember. And speaking of rank 10 Yu Gi Oh, guys, he got us rank 10 train supports. He's rank 10 Yu Gi Oh, and he's got his support for other stuff, I'm pretty sure. But the guy is very known for the Archetype Archive um, series that he has on his channel where he kind of discusses bad archetypes or maybe just old archetypes in Yu Gi Oh, how they, where they went wrong, how they were good, what the original idea was, what whatnot. I've watched a few episodes of that. That one's pretty good. I've watched, you know, I've watched the channel a long time. Uh, but I will, that's actually what I'm going to note here, but I haven't watched the channel in a long time. But, like, that Shape Snatch thing he did was pretty freaking funny. So that's one extra weird, quirky thing that a Yugi Tuber is known for. So Rank 10 is known for Rank 10 trains, of course, but he's also known for... Freaking shape snatch. He made like a real life shape snatch. That was the funniest crap I saw in Yu Gi Tubing for like a while. <laughs> Next up is Big Robbie Cole, M. Cole 40. 
The dude is a behemoth in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. Literally, have you met the guy? He is as tall as he is wide. That is saying a lot. <laughs> Like no, seriously, I'm not being mean. I'm not being mean. I promise you'd have to know the guy like seriously, like Robbie's a freaking way cool guy He's known for gadgets Seriously, um, the guy way back in the day um, in Teledad formats had uh, several tournament tops with gadgets I think he might have had, like I, he had at least one top eight that I know about um, And I know about it because he actually helped me with a video that I did about Teledad format in his deck profile He topped with is at the end of that video when I go over the deck profiles that were around during Teledad format I show different examples gadgets being one of those decks Robbie's deck list is back there. Robbie is also known for his big ass blue shirts. Legends say that they have to make custom blue shirts just f I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. They really should make a blue gadget in his honor though because seriously, if there's anybody in the Yu-Gi-Oh community that's known for playing a deck, like anybody, it would be Robbie Cole and Gadgets, seriously, or, or Sam and, T and Six Samurai or something, you know, it's like on that level. I talked about Volcanic Pasakani earlier, if that's how you're saying it. I'm just gonna call him Volcanic Pasakani because it sounds like a Yu-Gi-Oh card anyways. But there are more non yu gi tubers that are famous for cards and decks and, and actually formats and uh, as I talked about with Robbie's shirt and other weird things like, what's good YouTube? Like, <laughs> Yeah, like the more I say it, the more I sound like him, I swear. What I'm saying here is that Yugi tubers are known for some pretty quirky things in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, but there are also non-Yugi tubers that are known for very specific things. Pro players and other people that are known for very specific things in the Yu-Gi-Oh community that you might not know about. Except for this next guy. This if you've ever if you've been around in the Yu-Gi-Oh community or have played GOATs, you will know who this next guy is. Chris Perovic. That guy, if you, you cannot talk about GOAT format without talking about Chris Perovic at some point. The guy is the GOAT god or something. I don't know. That's just, I mean, I've never met the guy. I've never really talked to the guy or anything. But, I mean, ever since I played Yu-Gi-Oh! and got into GOATs, I've heard that dude's name dropped in like every conversation, at least every other match or duel or whatever. The dude's name is, I mean, every video that you watch about goats, his name's dropped. The guy is known for goat format. And the last player I'm gonna talk about in this video, guys, is a friend of mine, Sam Cox. The guy has more tops with fluffles than anybody else on this planet. Unless somebody else has passed him that I don't know about, he has more fluffle tops than anybody else. It's nuts. I mean, I'll go with tur to tournaments with the guy and I would be playing like freaking, I would be playing meta. I went to freaking tournaments playing Pendulum when Pendulum Magician was like the deck. And like one, like one, you know, top 32 one time with him, like playing that deck. But then another, another tournament, that dude's playing like what I think is just fluffle junk. And I don't top in Tulsa in my backyard with like the best deck of the format. I was like, dude, how the hell? How the hell? You know what I mean? Fluffles just fuck people up, man. They don't know how to play against them. And the deck OTKs and has a lot more of a ceiling, a lot higher of a ceiling than you would expect it to for a deck with stuffed animals in it. <laughs> Seriously. And that's it guys, players that are known for specific things in Yu-Gi-Oh besides Pay96 and Volcanics. I wonder if Kevin's doing what he's supposed to be doing. He better be. Subscribe! <laughs>